good morning, everyone. This is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. It's good we get together here. You know, whenever I'm doing church or I'm teaching or speaking somewhere, I'm always reading the room. That's kind of the job, you know. So um, I, I know they got some feistiness is here today. So, but anyway, but it's good that we can gather together and worship. Those of you who are watching us, uh, thanks for watching and comfort your home. Um, we, we appreciate you joining us this morning. This time, Patty will lead us forward with any announcements. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning to all of you out there watching. Uh, wish you were here. A few announcements that I have is there is coffee hour after service today, so please come down and join. Also, there was a correction uh, for the cemetery cleanup. It is April 20th. Uh, in the caller, it said it was on the 23rd. So the cemetery cleanup is April 20th. We also have birthdays to celebrate, Mike Hug and Lynette Bublitz. And again, our monthly mission for March is the West Bend Food Pantry for non-perishable foods. Are there any other announcements for the church today? Okay, if not, then let's stand for our call to worship. God calls us away from the tumult of the world that we may focus our thoughts on things that are lasting. In God's, God's presence, presence, we see, see our lives more clearly. The broken, the broken pieces, pieces are put, put back, back together. together. God calls us out of loneliness into a life of community. Worshiping, Worshiping together, together, caring about one another, we find out what it means to be truly human. But God will send us back into the world's confusion and busyness, its brokenness and isolation. We, we go about with serenity, serenity and joy, joy strengthened strengthen to be God's God servants, servants, the bearer of peace. Excuse me. Excuse me. Let's join together in our opening prayer. Compassionate, Compassionate and all merciful God, we thank you that in love you sent Jesus Christ to share our earthly life with his joys and suffering. Give us grace that in our need we may come to you in humility and receive your blessing with open hearts, that we may once again serve you with joy and thanksgiving. Amen. Let's join together in our opening hymn, Ye Servants of God. Would you please be seated? You know, when I think about the love of God and how we get so busy in our lives that we don't really sometimes even be still as we are called to do, 
and just know that God is God because in that stillness we will realize that in our humanness, in our mistakes, in our stumbling, in our falling, that God is always going to be there. It's called grace. Though our sins be as scarlet, they shall become as white as the driven snow. Our God loves us that much. So in the spirit of confession, would you please join together with me in our prayer of confession together. Let us pray. Wise and powerful God, you have given us your light and truth to guide us through confusion. Yet we have relied instead on our human wisdom and have lost our ways. You offer to share our burdens and give us your strength. Yet we trust in our own effort and find ourselves exhausted. Bring us back into your presence, O oh God. Overcome our separation from one another and from you. By your word and spirit, fill us with the gifts that equip us to meet life's demands, that we may be your people in the world and live in the confidence and joy of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Would you please join me in our unison assurance of pardon? The good news is that we don't have to depend upon ourselves, but on the Spirit of God to give us vitality. Thanks be to God. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. Amen. Now let's take a few moments and greet each other in Christian love. Pass the peace of Christ or give each other the holy heart. We're going to start the song now.
please be seated. Our Old Testament reading this morning is Psalm 139, verses 1 through 12. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall come over me, and night wraps itself around me, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. Thank you, Patty. Gospel lesson is probably as long as my sermon, but it's a good one. It's a good one. John 4, verses 5 through 42. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given his son Joseph. And Joseph's well was there. And Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Would you give me a drink? His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman from Samaria? Jews do not share things in common, as you know, with the Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, please give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well and with his sons and his flock drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everybody who drinks of this water will we'll be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give them will become, will become in them a spring of water gushing to eternal life. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have, or, or, or have to keep coming here to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. And the woman answered him, Sir, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have five husbands. And one that you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true, the woman said to him. Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped in this mountain, but you say that this place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on the mountain nor in Jerusalem. You will worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is here when the true worshipers will be worshiping the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeks such of these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And the woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us, Jesus said. I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then the disciples came, and they were astonished that that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back into the city, and she said to the people, 
Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? And they left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. And Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete that work. Do not say four months more, then comes a harvest. But I tell you, look around you and see the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages that is gathering fruit for eternal life so that the sower and reaper might rejoice together. For here the saying holds true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for that which you do not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. And he told me everything I've ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, They asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. May God's blessing be added to the sharing of this God's word. Okay, time for you to put on your children's thinking caps everybody. Jelani, you're a big guy. You don't need to come up here, but uh, I, might, I might ask you the question. Do you, you ever have to jiggle wires to get something to work? Okay, let's hear what some of the things you've had to j- jiggle. What are some of the things you have to jiggle to, to, to get it to work? This electric... Flashlights. What's that? Flashlights. A flashlight. I almost brought in one of those old-fashioned flashlights, you know, that you have to, you always see in these horror movies or something, people going into a basement, a dark, scary place, and, and they've got a flashlight that's just worthless, and they're shaking it, or it goes out at, at, at a certain time, you know, when something bad might happen. Christmas lights. Christmas lights. Well, speaking of, of well, not jiggling, but, uh, but yeah, Christmas lights, yeah, yeah. And you've got to be really careful. I don't want to I don't talk about jiggling things too much because... Um, Dennis and I were saying, I don't want to jiggle this wire because these wires on this headset are very fragile. And he's had to tape them up just to make sure that they work. It's because they move around too much or something. I don't know. But anyway, what else would jiggle? Uh, Jelani, what? Do you think of anything electric that you have to jiggle to get it to work? You don't know? All right. Electric scooter. Yeah, but don't you kick the tires on that? Yeah, that's right. Bob is thinking of one. I use duct tape. <laughs> duct tape fixes everything, even those jiggling wires. All right. Would you join me in a moment of prayer? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the opportunity to worship together and and sing praises and to share our love for each other in the faith. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. David McCasland tells about a woman whose car was stalled at an intersection. You ever had a car stall at an intersection? It's not a very good thing to, place to be, is it? it? Or it dies at a stoplight and you can't get it started again? You know, I mean, it it happens. So the hood was up, and she flagged McCaslin down for help. I can't get it started, she said. But if you jiggle the wire on that battery, I think it will work. And McCaslin grabbed the positive battery cable, and it came off in his hand. You know, it wasn't very tight in those terminals. Sometimes they don't get tightened like they, they should be. And definitely the cable was too loose. And the terminal needed to be tightened up, and he told her, I I can fix it if you have some tools, like a little wrench or something. She said, my husband says just to jiggle the wire, she replied. Ron, you'd never do that. Right? Right. It it always works if you jiggle the wire. Why don't you just try that? McCaslin paused for a moment, wondering why her husband didn't ride around town with her so he'd be available 
to jiggle that wire every time it needed jiggling. Finally, she said, ma'am, if I just jiggle that wire, you're going to need someone to do it every time you shut the engine off. If you give me two minutes and a wrench, just two minutes and a wrench, we can solve the problem. You can forget about it. Reluctantly, she fumbled underneath the front seat, and lo and behold, there was a crescent wrench. Though, and she passed it through the window of the old car. And as he tightened the battery terminal, it occurred to McCaslin how many times he had tried in his own life to get a quick fix from God. Oh, just jiggle the wire, God. I have this problem, Lord, and if you'll just jiggle this wire in my life, things will be okay. I'm in a hurry, so let, let's, let, let's get me going. Just jiggle the wire in the quickest way possible. But God doesn't want to jiggle wires. God's purpose is to work in human hearts. And sometimes it takes time. It takes work. He wants to take the time necessary to deal with our real problems because all of us have scars and stories. All of us, a lot of people are broken and wounded. And it needs more work than just jiggling the wires. To get the long-term solution to present to the pressing needs in our lives requires a complete surrender to God and a willingness to pro proceed on his terms. We must cooperate with him in whatever way it takes and how, for, and as how long ever it takes. As the lady drove away with her Titan terminal, McCaslin stopped for a moment and asked the Lord to say, no, the next time, he just wanted a quick fix. In our text for this morning, and I won't read the whole thing again, we meet this lady. Now, you probably know, understand the significance, the Samaritans, Jews and Samaritans, Jews were not supposed to, to, you know, to do anything with Samaritans. But how many times did Jesus tell stories about Samaritans, the good Samaritan, Samaritans that have done things? Um, but she needed more than just a wire jiggle. The setting, of course, is a village well, like a small town post office. A village well was a popular place where people would gather every day to draw water. And in doing so, they would see each other at the well and they'd share the news of the day. They would linger to hear the latest happenings and probably gossip. It was not uncommon for visiting teachers and preachers to address people at the well. The well was a primary center of activity, kind of like that small town post office. In, but in the ancient world, women would be the ones who often gathered water at the well early in the morning before the rest of the day, before the heat of the day, or they'd wait until the sun had set. This particular well was known as Jacob's well. It was a special well for it held very special historical memories for the people. It was the ground that Jacob had bought on his, on his deathbed and had given to his son Joseph. It was generally believed that Jacob had dug the well. This well was especially popular because it was reported that its water was better tasting than the other available wells. Some people might think, well, water's water. But it isn't, is it? I mean, sometimes, oh, that, that, something about that water, even though it's supposed to be tasteless, is better. So both the Samaritans and Jewish people would come to draw from this well. This well was located at a fork in the road. It was an ideal spot for travelers, ideal place to have a well. And as Jesus and his disciples were traveling through Samaria, they stopped to rest at this fork in the road. He sent his disciples into the city while he rested at the well. There was, there was, it was around noon Jesus first arrived, but after a few minutes, this woman comes walking up to draw water. She's carrying a water jug, a jar to fill it. And expecting to find no one at the well, the woman must have been surprised to encounter Jesus resting there. And she must have been truly shocked when Jesus spoke to her. You see, in Jesus' day, men were not permitted to speak with women in public. A man was not even supposed to speak to his wife in public. Those rules were so severe. And a spiritual leader teacher like Jesus certainly would not talk to a woman. But he did, especially a woman like this one was reported to be. First, because she was despised Samaritan, and second, because of her doubtful reputation. Incidentally, the longest recorded conversation 
for those who like trivia. The longest recorded conversation that Jesus had with any one person was this one at Jacob's well with a Samaritan woman. Jesus asked her, please give me a drink. The woman shocked. Jesus and Samaritans didn't share drinking, drinking cups. Jesus didn't have one. So the woman begins to question this Jesus, and he replies, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that you're saying this to, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. As is often the case in John's gospel, there is some level of misunderstanding in their conversation. Jesus is talking about life eternal. And the woman is thinking in concrete, practical terms. Oh, you want to drink a water? Pause to Jesus. Sir, Jesus, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Still, at the midst of the living water, she perks up. He's got her attention now. There's a legend about Jacob drawing water from the well. And naturally, um, the, the Samaritan woman asked Jesus for some living water. So then in her own words, I mean, never be thirsty and have, have to come here and drink again. The advantage to this woman, according to her own line of thinking, was not only would she be thirsty again, but she'd never have to face the humiliation or scorn from other women by going to the well with this living water. She'd be set. Okay. Well, and the Samaritan woman asked Jesus, are you greater than our ancestor Jacob? who give us this well. Notice here, Jesus is giving this woman a clue as to his true identity. He is greater than Jacob because he's able to give living water. So in Jesus' word, whoever drinks this water, I will give will never be thirsty again. And of course, when he calls her to go get her husband, she says she has no husband. Of course, Jesus knows this and confronts her with it. I can imagine him doing this rather compassionately. Sir, I see that you're a prophet, she says. This woman at the well had encountered many men. But anyway, she found that Jesus was very different than those men. Many years ago, it was a bitter cold evening in northern Virginia. The old man's beard, it was an old man standing there, was glazed with winter's frost while he waited for a ride across the river. The wait seemed endless. He was cold. He was probably suffering close to hypothermia. His body became numb and stiff from the frigid north wind. He heard the faint, steady rhythm of approaching hooves, approaching the frozen path. And anxiously, he watched as several horsemen rounded the bend, and he let the first one pass without an effort to get his attention. Then another passed and crossed the river. And finally, the last rider neared the spot where the old man sat like a snow statue. And as this one drew near, the old man caught the rider's eye and said, Sir, would you mind giving an old man a ride to the other side? There doesn't appear to be a passageway by foot. Reining his horse, the rider uh, replied, Sure thing, hop on board. And seeing the old man was unable to lift his half-frozen body from the ground to get on that horse, the horseman actually got off. He dismounted, and he helped the old man onto the horse. And the horseman took the old man, not just across the river, but to his destination, which was a few miles away. And as they neared this tiny but cozy cottage, the horseman's curiosity caused him to inquire, Sir, I noticed that you let several other riders pass by without making an effort to secure a ride. Then I came up, and immediately you asked me for a ride. I'm curious why. Why, on such a bitter night, you would wait and ask the last rider? What if I had refused and left you there? And of course, the man would have died, probably. The old man lowered himself slowly from the horse. He looked at the rider straight in the eyes, and he replied, I've been around these parts for some time. I reckon I know people pretty good. The old timer continued. I looked into the eyes of the other writers immediately, saw there was no concern for my situation. It would have been useless to even ask them for a ride. 
But when I looked into your eyes, I saw kindness and compassion that were there. I knew then and there, with your gentle spirit, would come the opportunity to give me assistance in my time of need. Those heartwarming comments touched the horseman deeply. I'm most grateful for what you have said, he told the old man. May I never get too busy in my own affairs that I fail to respond to the needs of others with kindness and compassion. And with that, Thomas Jefferson turned his horse around and made his way back to the White House. The woman at the well was never the same after her experience with Jesus. The townspeople discovered Jesus only because of the unlikely witness of this woman at the well. And many more believed because of his word, John tells us. The townspeople discovered Jesus only because of the unlikely witness of this woman at the well. The townspeople said to the woman who was responsible for bringing them to Jesus, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that he truly is a savior of the world. Jesus certainly has done more than jiggle a few wires in this woman's life. And he wants to do the same for us. Perhaps it's time to do more than in our impatience, just jiggle a few wires to keep our life going or to kick the can down the road, so to speak. Perhaps it's time to ask him to give us the living water as well. Amen. Would you join me in a moment of prayer? Gracious and loving God, we thank you that you bring the living water. You bring that spirit that can sustain us through all the droughts of our lives, through all the darkness of our lives, for all the bitterness in our lives. You give and offer living water to everyone, God. And we thank you for that message. Help us when we encounter people who are in need of ambassadors who carry that living water. Help us to be those people and that people who are in need recognize that when they encounter us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I would like to ask what prayers of joy or concern you have. I've got a few. Um, but uh, I'll save mine for last, but I may forget them. So uh, prayers of joy or concern, want to lift up. Wife's kind of looking down like a teacher's going to call on me. I see I'm passing you by, Kay. Any prayers of joy or concern? <laughs> you got to turn sideways and won't be able to see you, dude. He's going to be lean and mean. So if I go hiking with him, he, uh, he's just going to go off to the races. So, yeah, well, you know, thank you for that. Just, just be sure, and once you go off the diet, that uh, you don't do what I do after I finish a rock, which is I'll go eat a whole bunch of sweet rolls and ice cream and stuff like that. So. <laughs> Any other prayers? I've got several. First and foremost, I want to thank Patty. She took this robe home and cleaned it. Uh, she wanted to get rid of all of the uh, makeup stains on my shoulders from, from hugging. Uh, such a bad problem. So, and it smells good. Thank you, Patty, and thank you for your reading. So I've got uh, a, a few serious ones. Um, I'm going to read one from Kay here first, and then I'll share the ones that I have. Uh, please uh, we move upon the hearts of those who, who legislate on both sides of the aisle. Uh, who vote for them. May our country turn to you now more wholeheartedly than ever. Yeah, thank you, Kay. I've got, um, as you probably know, uh, I work a lot with first responders during the week, and this week was no exception. I had the privilege of speaking at a war memorial down in Milwaukee for first responders who came out of military. So I had the military connection. And helping to reconnect people with their sense of purpose and had the... Um, district attorneys and lots of law enforcement officers retired and new, and firefighters in, in my sessions. 
So that prayer. But I'm also meeting, last Sunday I mentioned, I will not say who it is or where, a colleague of mine who is a pastor, um, longtime pastor, um, a female, and she has been getting threats, even some death threats, um, from people who have gone to her church. That should never, ever in fact, it makes me really angry because one of, the, one of my pet peeves are bullies and I stand up to bullies. I don't care who you are. So that's nobody in this church, but it's uh, prayers for her. She's hurting. We're going to meet on a weekly basis. And remember singing uh, to Bob Case, the police officer, during our caroling. I'm going to see Bob on Monday, and um, I, will, I will bring your prayers for him when I go to see him at 1 o'clock on Monday. And uh, just, just a lot of other things I really can't get into, but, but please know, um, I love all of you, and I know that's mutual. So would you join me in a moment of prayer? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the opportunity to live, for the gift of life. There are a lot of hurting people, God, pastors, people, people who are wounded, people who are broken or feel broken people who are hurting who need your presence your living water we pray for our nation gracious God that people on both sides of the aisle can come together and work together for the common good we pray this we pray for so many things God in our personal lives for those who are suffering those who are sick those who are struggling, struggling with treatments we pray for joys too, gracious God, and all of those joyous moments that we have in life that we sometimes gloss over and take for granted. God, give us the living water. We need it. And now, gracious God, we together pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples by praying ourselves. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Freely and richly has God blessed us, and is even bringing the sunshine this morning later on here. So as an expression of our gratitude, let us share our gifts of love in our morning offering. Gracious and always loving God, we would ask 
you ex that we accept these gifts that you accept these gifts we offer up to you. Granted the causes to which they are devoted be causes of love given to your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray, we share, and we live. Amen. Would you please be seated? You know, what should be the most unifying symbol or sacrament in the church is sometimes the most divisive. And the reason I say that is, is that Jesus invites all who wish to, to partake in the sharing of the bread of life and the cup of love. It is, our, it is our privilege for any and all to join together because it is in this love represented here, the greatest of the world will ever know that we are bonded one to another as a body of Christ. So, to prepare for that, would you please join me in our liturgy? The table is now prepared for us. We are invited to share in the feast of God's presence, celebrating here and now all that is meant by being alive. We celebrate Jesus, who touched our brokenness with his life, who gathers us together inside and out, we give ourselves to that wholeness, moving from hurt to happiness, and from darkness to light, filling our lives with love, laughter, and each other, and joining with all created things to say, Holy are you, O God. As we do remember, and we hear every time we celebrate Holy Communion, Jesus took bread, as was a custom, and he did it many times, but this Last Supper was different. He took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And as was the custom, he took and he poured into a cup from which his disciples would drink. And he said, this is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. In this cup represents greatest love the world will ever know. Would the ushers please come forward?
Because we are one in Christ, let us take and eat. And because we are loved, each of us individually, more than we will ever know, let us drink his cup in remembrance of him. Would you please rise and join together in our prayer of thanksgiving? We give thanks, O God, because in your own free gift and love, you have reached out to us, you have refreshed us at your table, touched our deepest need, and called us to a life shared in memory and hope. Send us forth with courage and joy in the name of Jesus Christ, that we too may become bread and peace for one another and for the world. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Strong and true. 